We all have music that we listen to depending on our mood. We may listen to some jazz while we're in the kitchen cooking. A little sexual healing by Hot 8 Brass Band. <laughs> we may listen to the Beatles while we're strolling down the street. Paolo Nutini in the morning on the weekends. Some classical music before bed. And maybe even the Proclaimers if we're singing in the shower. When someone with autism is listening to music, they, te they may use it to stop them from having a meltdown or an outbreak. If an advertisement comes on and disrupts the serenity of the sound of the music or the white noise, it can completely make it worse or throw them off. If a neurotypical is listening to music and an advertisement comes on, it can disrupt and irritate them. But as I said, someone with autism, it can make things a whole lot worse. Hi. My name is Kuhn Weyer, and I was diagnosed with Asperger's, a higher functioning form of autism, nearly four years ago. I've always struggled with high volumes of noise in large groups of people. And at, at, at family events, such as Easter or Christmas, when things got too loud, I'd run away and hide in a nearby tree. When someone says autism, most of society will think of one of two things. They might think of the person who flaps their arms, rocks back and forth, such as Dustin Hoffman's Rain Man. Or they may think of the person who's incredibly intelligent, but has little to no social skills, such as Forrest Gump or the notorious autistic character, Dr. Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. It is true that many people with autism are quite intelligent, but that does not apply to everyone. I would say I'm quite bright, in primary school, I did quite well. I live in the countryside, so my primary school was quite small. We had a population of a little over 70. I had one close friend, but over time, he became closer with one of the other boys in my class. Eventually, the two of them moved schools for different reasons, and I was left as the only boy in my year. So, for the first time in my life, I decided to move schools. I really enjoyed my new school, However, I never really made any close friends. I think I spent most of my time waiting for the next stage of my life to come around, secondary level education. I had people telling me, oh, you'll love secondary level. There's more people with similar interests to you. You'll make loads of friends. However, once I did move to secondary school, I soon realized that wasn't 100% true. Yes, there were more people with similar interests to me, but there were a lot more people bigger crowds, a lot more noise. I struggled. The school I was in had over 1,000 students on campus every day. So, once again, I decided to move school. I moved to a smaller school, and there were a lot less people. However, it wasn't for the best. I went to a smaller school with about 80 people on campus every day. I was told that I would grow out of my autism, that it's just a phase. However, I've come to learn that's not 100% true. Since then, I have moved to another smaller school, and I re-found my love for education. In my previous school, I just lost all interest. I kind of floated through the year. I've made friends, and the school I'm in when I started, I had about 80 students. It's been now three years, and we have over 250 students. I love the day-to-day -day life there. The relationship between the teachers and the students is phenomenal. In Stepside Educate Together, we have no uniform, which allows for a lot more freedom of expression. Someone with autism may not be able to pick up on your behaviors and interests. However, looking at your clothing can show us a lot more and it may be able to bridge that gap to start a conversation. As someone with autism, I believe it's so important for schools to not have uniform. But that's a different story. Earlier, in, earlier, I mentioned spiraling. Spiraling is a phrase we came up with at home to describe my outbreaks. When I spiral, I get irritated. I tend to take it off, take it, take it out on my family by being rude. 
We call it a spiral because it's like this downward spin of negativity. I get stuck in my own head. I tend to spiral because maybe I've had a long day. Maybe I'm overtired. But the most often reason for me spiraling is a sensory overload. So, sensory overload is exactly what it sounds like. You're bombarded with, by your senses. For me, some of my senses are heightened, whereas some are diminished or just disregarded. When I have a sensory overload, I can see less of what's going on directly in front of me, but my peripheral vision comes, but becomes better. I can see what's going on around me. When I have a sensory overload, I can't taste anything different, but the details of my teeth and my tongue become more noticeable. They feel out of place. When I have a sensory overload, the faintest of smells can become overpowering. Whether it's the smell of the cleaning agent from the room being cleaned the night before, or the smell of teenagers after doing sports. <laughs> when I have a sensory overload, my clothes can feel constricting and my movements limited. I may have drier skin and I may not notice I'm tensing all the muscles in my body. When I have a sensory overload, I can hear everything twice as clearly. I can hear everything. I can hear a door closing, a chair scraping, or even a conversation across the room. Can you hear that? That's white noise. When things get too loud in the classroom, it goes one of two ways for me. I'll put on my headphones and play white noise so I can't hear what's going on. Or I'll just try and concentrate on my breathing. But it doesn't always go that smoothly. Sometimes I'll just get stuck in my head and I'll make more noise than the background noise and aim of creating my own white noise. This is just my experience and everyone experiences autism differently. But there are a couple of things that can help the masses. So, next time you come in contact with someone with autism, maybe you can help them out by being conscious of the amount of noise you're making. Have good eye contact, but not in a creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> and be friendly, but not too friendly. <laughs> I hope that I've given you an insight to what's going on in your peripheral. I hope that you've got a better idea of what it's like for someone with autism to experience the background noise of classrooms, work, or wherever they are. I hope that you, as an individual, now have some more tools to help someone with autism. Thank you very much for listening.